Season 4 of Netflix's Karate Kid series Cobra Kai delivers a slew of ingenious Easter eggs. The show loves making direct and indirect jabs about the former movies and has raised the bar. So did you get the numerous references throughout the show? Keep on watching and discover some of the best hidden gems. First up, that yellow convertible is in the spotlight for a reason. Daniel, played by Ralph Macchio, applies Mr. Miyagi's Wax On Wax Off training program for his new Miyagi Do trainees at the start of Season 4. Students are polishing that beautiful yellow 1947 Ford Super Deluxe convertible to perfect their blocking abilities. That automobile has been a recurring theme throughout the series, and it frequently appears in Season 4 as more pupils study Miyagi-Do. To be honest, the convertible is more of a permanent feature than an Easter egg. However, it serves an important role not only in waxing, but also as a stepping stone for Daniel to become a car dealer eventually. But here's the catch. Mr. Miyagi gave Daniel the convertible in The Karate Kid. Daniel said Ali ruined it in The Karate Kid Part 2, but Ali contradicted that assertion when she returned to Cobra Kai last season. But that wasn't the only thing. Ralph Macchio still has the prized original automobile, which was given to him as a present when he made the first film. However, in Cobra Kai, David referred to the legendary ride as a piece of garbage, which it most emphatically is not. The Miyagi-Do property is crammed with ancient cars, which must be worth a fortune. You'd think the LaRusso Auto Group owner would keep them in a coveted garage. They remain, however, in front of Miyagi Original Do's dirt yard lot for the sake of cinematic homage. Interestingly, a few direct quotes from the original movies weaseled their way into Cobra Kai. Aside from Daniel quoting Mr. Miyagi's philosophy now and then, several words from the films are repeated, especially when it comes to karate teachings. A man can't stand, he can't fight, Terry Silver says to Robbie after catching him teaching Kenny some Miyagi-Do balance skills. In Karate Kid Part 3, Silver's intensive training program, dubbed Quick Silver, also happens to be rule number one. Another direct quote is one we're sure was easy to miss. In Season 4, Eli has another run-in with his ex after his painful breakup with Moon in Season 2. He's left pining for her beside Dimitri after sharing a romantic moment in the hall. However, when Dimitri reminds him that Moon and her girlfriend have been separated for several weeks, Eli follows Dimitri down the corridor saying, only one week? What, five weeks? How many weeks are there in a year? Only eagle fang-eyed viewers may have seen this direct quotation from the first Karate Kid film, originally stated by Daniel in reaction to Ali, telling him that things between her and Johnny have been over for weeks. Next, Booze has more screen time than the supporting actors. There's a lot of alcohol in Cobra Kai. Throughout the series, Johnny, played by William Zabka, is constantly sipping Coors Banquet beers, to the point that he may be their new commercial frontman. Season 4 explains why. A Coors can is one of the few keepsakes he has of his father, who abandoned him. But that isn't the only beer Johnny enjoys. When he accepts to learn some Miyagi-Do Karate, he finds himself doing activities similar to those he did at the start of Cobra Kai, when he was working odd maintenance jobs to make ends meet. Daniel preaches Miyagi's house painting, deck sanding, and car polishing program, all the while annoyingly citing Mr. Miyagi's fortune cookie wisdom and pretentiously imitating Miyagi's clipped English syntax. But returning to the beer, Johnny eventually grows tired of Miyagi-Do's house painting and snakes one of Daniel's beers, so Daniel puts him in his place by slicing the bottleneck off. This is exactly what Mr. Miyagi did in The Karate Kid to ward off some bigots, only it was four bottles. Don't go anywhere, we've just begun dissecting the best Easter eggs. Johnny, being a Coors fan, complained about the fruit in Daniel's beer, although it's worth noting that Daniel's brewski's label is prominently displayed. Blue Moon Belgian White, which is owned by Johnny's favorite brand Coors, is what he drinks. To be fair, it hasn't all been about Coors product placement. Cobra Kai has a good sense of regional liquors. When Daniel was in Okinawa for Season 3, he buried his sorrows with Suntory Whiskey Toki. In Season 4, when Kreese loses a wager with Silver, he rewards him with a mixer of Ba Mui Ba, aka 333 Premium Beer, a rare import from Vietnam. Perhaps this drunken knowledge is linked to the most amusing Season 4 Easter egg of all time. Silver rediscovers his karate nature in his wine cellar at the end of Season 4 premiere and kicks a bottle of Cayman Estates Wines. The winery, named for its creator and proprietor, Robert Mark Cayman, is located in Sonoma, California. Cayman wrote the original screenplays for the Karate Kid movie, as well as Taps, Fifth Element, Taken, and the Transporter series. While Cayman isn't directly engaged in the creation of Cobra Kai, perhaps the show's overarching emphasis on spirits is a nod to his expertise as a winemaker, and the black belt is a nod to a real martial arts center. When Daniel asked Mr. Miyagi what kind of belt did he wear in the Karate Kid, he replied, Canvas, J.C. Penny, 380. You like? But Cobra Kai has a black belt. Johnny reads an issue of Black Belt magazine in Season 1. In addition, the cover of the February-March 2021 issue of Black Belt features Zapka, Machio, and Cove in a tale about Cobra Kai. This makes sense when you consider that Black Belt is owned by Century, a legitimate martial arts supplies company just like Blue Moon Beer. Century is prominently displayed as the tournament sponsor of the All-Valley Karate Tournament, and Century equipment may be found throughout the Cobra Kai dojo, especially after Sensei Silver improved all of the school 
Duel's gear and equipment in Season 4. Even while they haven't provided a close-up of the brand badges, it's a safe assumption that the Miyagi-Do is also from Century. Of course, the show is rife with homages to its cast and their filmography. When Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai meet in a drive-in, the film playing is Bloodsport. Bloodsport was Jean-Claude Van Damme's breakout triumph four years after The Karate Kid. Frank Dux, a real-life martial artist who claimed to have learned in jitsu and won 329 matches, was played by J.C. Fd. Nonetheless, Bloodsport was a popular grindhouse picture that has achieved cult status and is just the type of cinema that Johnny and the Cobra Kai Dojo would like. Pat Morita appeared in half of the Bloodsport franchise. In Bloodsport 2 and 3, he played David Lung. Lung is a rich businessman, and the first sequel revolves around Lung's precious sword and how it's stolen and then reclaimed by Cardo. In the third installment, Cardo seeks assistance from Lung, who refers him to a shaman. But this is Cobra Kai, so there's bound to be more. Of course, the project's screenwriter was none other than Robert Mark Kamen. Cobra Kai has already created cinematic Easter eggs like these. Earlier in the presentation, Johnny throws enthusiasm for the 1986 film Iron Eagle, part of another four-film franchise from the 1980s. In the first film, Rob Garrison played Packer. That part was sandwiched between his performances as Tommy in the Karate Kid's first and second editions. His final acting role was reprising Tommy in Season 2, Episode 6 of Cobra Kai's Take a Right, one of the series' most heartbreaking episodes. Garrison died five months after the debut of Season 2. Oops, we may have to disagree with Mr. Miyagi and his philosophy. Cobra Kai would not exist if Mr. Miyagi's assessment of a good battle was correct. You know, win or lose, you fight well and gain the respect of your enemies. Yeah, it never really works that way, does it? Rivalries are never forgotten, and there are choreographic allusions to the original films within those bouts. After being catfished by Anthony and his gang, Kenny is duped into appearing in a park dressed as his video game character, Dr. Scribblebottom, and humiliated. They follow him into a cyclone fence, a scene that alludes to Johnny and his Cobra Kai gang chasing Daniel into a fence and beating him. They were all dressed up because they had just returned from a Halloween dance. The All-Valley Karate Tournament hosts the biggest Easter egg bouts in Season 4. The All-Valley, like the 47 Ford Convertible, is a mainstay in Karate Kid history, but these Easter eggs are hidden well inside the fights. When the final battle between Robbie and Eli ends in sudden death over time, the announcer declares that it is the first time this has happened since 1985. Daniel and Mike Barnes, Sean Kanan, faced off in the last battle of the Karate Kid Part 3 in 1985. The ultimate finale fight between Sam and Tori is similar to Daniel versus Barnes. Before engaging her, Sam recites some traditional kata. This is the same tactic Daniel employed to throw Barnes off guard in their final confrontation. Tori is similarly thrown off, but the result is quite different. And thankfully, we've been spared awkward love triangles. Cobra Kai is always glad to welcome back a former Karate Kid character, and Season 5 is no exception. When Amanda temporarily leaves Daniel, she returns to Ohio and rekindles their friendship with Jessica Andrews, Daniel's sort of love interest from The Karate Kid Part 3. Jessica is a recent transfer from Ohio to LA in that film, and she and Daniel form a connection, albeit they never become a couple. Rumor has it that the 27-year-old Ralph Macchio was uncomfortable portraying romantic scenes with 16-year-old actress Robin Lively. While it appears to be a strange coincidence that Daniel's wife is friends with one of his almost sorta girlfriends, Cobra Kai explains why. Jessica returned to Ohio, and when Amanda relocated from the Buckeye State to LA, Jessica got in touch with Daniel. As it turns out, the long-missing Jessica Andrews is vital to the Cobra Kai canon and Daniel's love life. Bringing Lively back for the role is as exciting for the makers as it is for the fans. Let us know which Easter egg you spotted too. Subscribe and like our channel for more on the most trending shows.